To continue my series around introduction to FPV, I thought it would be useful just to spend five minutes talking about the different type of aerials or antennas that you can get when you get into the hobby. It can appear a little bit daunting, there's lots of claims, counterclaims, costs, lots of things to consider. It really boils down to a handful of things and I thought it would be useful to cover those quickly. In front of us here we have a standard um, video transmitter from an FPV kit with what's called a whip antenna which is the kind of thing that you get uh, with all of this kit that's free and uh, kind of doesn't cost you anything extra and we have something called a circular polarised antenna and we'll go through why you'd use both of these and also we'll talk around um, the helical and also the patch style antennas that are more expensive and give you a lot more range. So first of all we'll start talking around the good old whip antenna or dipole antenna is also another name for them. Now these are uh, great because they usually come as part of the kit when you buy it for the first time and if you're new to FPV they will give you a medium amount of range um, depending on tide, weather, traffic and everything else that we've already talked about. Now the challenge with these guys is that when the transmitter is working whatever orientation the um, transmission aerial or antenna is on the best reception is when you have a receiving antenna in exactly the same position. So if these guys are always facing each other, you have the strongest signal. The challenge is if you bank your aircraft, then actually the amount of overlap that you have, if you imagine that's an X, so that's the maximum signal and that's the least amount of signal, the overlap means that whenever you turn the craft or it gets away from you, you lose a lot of the signal. Second problem this have is because it, it sets up a radio wave that is in a particular direction, so it can be horizontal, it can be vertical, or however the aerial is set up. Because it does that, it also is pretty bad around reflections, because reflections tend to distort the radio waves, and you get that multipathing that we talked about in our other video, which means that the reflected radio signals are also picked up by the antenna, and that causes interference. So, in summary then, here's a quick slide just showing us what we've talked about. Um, we absolutely um, have these as part of the kits. They usually come free of charge, which is fantastic. The challenge that we have is not particularly high gains with these things, so we have to work at range. And um, they're omnidirectional, so what that means is, is that you can fly anywhere on a field. Now... If we actually show you what that looks like, so here's the field, and we've got our little FPV on here with this craft. Uh, if we kind of drew in the air what kind of range he's getting from his little whip antenna, it would look like this. So he can fly anywhere within this bubble of reception that he can get using his whip antenna, and the more the craft banks, the um, smaller that bubble will get. And also if he stood near a wall or some of the other things that we've talked about in our other videos, then he will also experience problems. Now, that is why the majority of cases, what you'll find is that people who are coming into FPV will very quickly get bored of these antennas and get rid of them and replace them with these guys. Now, this is a circular polarized antenna and in here you might see them on forums and other bits and pieces it looks like a little three or four leaf clover with twisted petals made out of wire inside i quite like these ones just because they're actually encased and it stops you uh, uh, damaging that very sensitive alignment that's in the top now the benefit with these guys is that they operate in a very similar way to the whips in that they just plug in. Uh, they are omnidirectional again, so again you can fly the model anywhere around you, this will pick it up. The benefit with these is rather than producing that single wave that's in one particular plane, these produce a spinning um, circular transmission. So what that actually means, without going into too much detail, it means that no matter how much you bank and roll the craft, there is always alignment 
in the antenna to get a good signal. So what that means is that you get longer range, you handles multipaths very well because every time that spinning signal is bounced it actually changes rotations and that rotation isn't picked up by this which is super. Um, the downside is this is usually an extra thing that you have to buy. They're not particularly expensive. If you buy the ones that people have made on places like eBay they're very inexpensive. Uh, just make sure that you're getting good quality ones because they have to be, the, the, the lobes and the little wires in here have to be at the right length to match the 5.8 gig wafer lengths. But um, they are a great general purpose field flying antenna. So again, if we have our little diagram, we're back to that same field. Here's our FPV here in the middle. If we now give an idea of, you know, the range, then here's that balloon of signal. So you can see that he's able to get a lot further using the same equipment just by replacing the whip antennas with these circular polarized antennas. Now, the other two antennas that we'll talk about are a little bit more specialized. Um, they're helical or patch antennas, and they take the same ideas that you have in the circular polarized antennas, i.e. you have one of these on the craft, and on the ground station or your goggles, you have either um, this plate design, uh, which is called a patch antenna, or you have the helical, which looks like a corkscrew stuck on top of a tin lid. Now, these are much better for range. So they, they give you the longest distance and actually we'll go into the differences between them in a second. They also handle multipaths very well because they operate in a similar style to the um, antenna that we've just looked at. So those reflections don't handle. Now available in many styles, many sizes. So some of the smaller helical one, the one that looks like a um, corkscrew on a tin lid, actually can be mounted directly to goggles or you can have much larger ones with many more turns to give you more sensitivity mounted on a ground station. Now the challenge with these is they are not omnidirectional, i.e. they have a cone of signal and reception that goes out in front of them. Now that's the benefit here, is rather than having all of that sensitivity all around, they have a sensitivity in a direction. So you can think of it like the TV aerial on top of your house, it will point to the mast that is transmitting. That mast will only, uh, they'll only get a good reception if it's pointing vaguely towards where that mast is. If you turn that TV area around on your um, roof, you'll lose the TV signal. The same with this kind of equipment, it has to be pointing in the right direction. So you need antenna trackers, and those are little gimbals that are usually on a base station that track the position of the model and then keep the model in that cone of signal. So, Let's just have a look what that means, because that sounds a bit confusing. Let's talk about our friend, the helical first. So here we have our guy on the edge of the field, and you can see now, rather than it being a bubble that surrounds, uh, a bubble of range that surrounds him, it's actually coming out the front of that helical antenna at about a 60 degree width. Now, when you get a little bit further away, 60 degrees can cover a lot of sky, but closer in, you'll find it won't. So he now can not only fly around the field, he can actually get a little bit away from the field as well. So it's giving him the maximum range. The thing to remember about helical antennas is that you can buy different sizes, anywhere from 3 to 12 turn. And each time you add additional turns onto the antenna, you make it more sensitive or you increase the DBI, which gives you more range. But it makes this cone or the beam width narrower. So, for example, if you're looking at a three-turn helical, it'll probably give you just over 7 dBi's worth of gain, and it'll give you a nice wide beam, 75 degrees, or potentially even a little bit more, depending on how it's manufactured. At the other end of the scale, if you go for a 12-turn helical, it'll give you much more gain, it'll give you over 12 uh, dBi of gain, but the beam in the sky will probably be only about 40 degrees. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at these antennas, that they, um, the characteristics change with the type of manufacturer, how well it's made, the tolerance is used, and also primarily the number of turns in the actual antenna itself. The one that will give you the most range is the patch antenna. And the patch antenna 
I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit here because it'll give you that much range. Um, again, very directional, but actually the beam from a patch antenna or the, the, uh, the cone of reception is actually even tighter. It's about 30 degrees. But again, that gives a very long distance. So it means that not only can the FPV now fly in his field locally around him to the edge and over the edge, but now he can get a long way away. And people are claiming that they can get kilometer plus flights using an antenna like this with um, with 25 milliwatt transmitters. Now, I would say that this kind of um, antenna would be great if you were planning on um, going down a particular track that was very straight and you're at one end of it and you're going to be traveling in a straight line to and from and that's the FPV flight. This would give you the maximum range and the maximum um, fun with that. If you were going to fly in a field, then I would say you want to go with the circular polarized antenna because that big bubble of reception gives you the ability to fly all over the field, above yourself, around yourself, and not lose any of that reception. So hopefully that makes sense. This is only intended as a very brief introduction to antenna um, choices. Now when you're looking on the uh, websites and other bits and pieces and you're thinking about the kit that you want, you'll have a little bit more information. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe. And if you need to talk to me, my Help Out channel is now available. Happy flying.